All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's included with your laser. So obviously the laser itself is included and um, you can kind of see it here. So my laser is a Krypton Spider 3. Uh, at the top here, there's these little caps that come on and off. And uh, this particular one is a, a cap that reduces the laser power by 80%. So only 20% of the laser power is actually used. They're not all getting shipped with this because of the new Smart Switch 2.0 um, switch that's actually available on these lasers. The Smart Switch allows you to actually lower the power to, I believe it's around 150 uh, milliwatts. So it's a somewhat safer um, laser to actually play with. But I honestly prefer to, when I'm in the house, um, I prefer to have that safety cap on and also put it in low power, which brings it down to, let's say, 35 milliwatts of power output through the lens here. You know, it's just uh, a little bit easier to play with. It's less risky. It's still a definite eye hazard, but it's less risky to have it set up like this. So when I ordered my laser, they did offer the expanded lens kit with the laser, which... Uh, is what we have here. So you can see there's actually, um, I believe, seven different lenses in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They all do different things. I'll make sure to post uh, some pictures of that. So this is an expanded um, lens set that uh, you can order. I believe they sell this for either 20 or $50 uh, dollars extra to get this. When I ordered mine, it just came with it. So the next thing we've got, is this which is optics set and um, I'm gonna do a separate kind of review on the optics set by itself um, this is extra it is not something that comes regularly with the the uh, the laser you can kind of see there's actually quite a few different lenses in there and uh, you know I don't know that this is necessarily for everybody if you're gonna get the laser um, this may not be needed so um, they do include which is a very good thing. They do include these what they call laser shades and basically what these do is they block the wavelength of light um, that the laser puts out. You can still see the the dot on a wall with like a high power mode on the laser so you can still use the laser and you still can kind of get around um, but you're not going to be seeing like the laser beam. It, it definitely lowers the amount of light coming in dramatically which is a very good thing so if you actually get a glancing shot of it reflecting off of something you um, don't get irreparable eye damage they do come in these nice cases i did buy a few extra sets with a, a little microfiber cloth and um all right so i'm going to show you guys some of the different beam patterns that come with the expanded lens kit but first this is the normal beam this is full power and that is just the standard beam. While I'm doing this, I am actually putting this laser into what they call the tactical mode. It means that whenever I push this power button again, it will um, turn right back on. Uh, I don't have to do any special click patterns or anything like that to get the laser to come back on. All right, this is lens number one. It is just a line. You can see. You could do some very cool um, sky effects with this. If you have a fog machine or something like that, the fog will actually come up through the beam and um, create this really neat sky effect. So if you just tilt it up at an angle, um, you can have these very cool effects. The next beam is a cross pattern. My uh, lens got a little bit dirty, so that you could see the little diversions and things like that on it. but. Yeah, it's just a simple cross. Um, you could still do some very cool effects if you go out at night um, and shine this up in the sky. It looks pretty darn cool. I'm not 100% sure what to call this pattern. Um, uh, I'll call it the star pattern, I suppose, because it looks like a bunch of stars. I don't know, whatever. Um, very, very cool. If you have any fog at all in your home, like a fog machine, um, this is a very neat pattern. One word of warning with this pattern though, it shoots a ton of stray beams everywhere. So anybody that's even off to the side of the laser will have a very good chance of getting a stray beam in their eyes. This is the first of two beams. And this is, um, I don't know, I'd call this a spotlight function or something like that. It's still pretty darn bright. The interesting thing about this 
um, and I think it's probably pretty overexposed on the darn camera, but it's got like, uh, I don't know if you've ever looked through a microscope at like little um, um, cells or anything like that, um, you would see like that kind of a, a image shown on this. It's kind of a very interesting thing. But anyways, um, this could be used to light up a room. If you're out in the woods or something and um, you're worried about um, animals or anything like that, like a cougar or a bear or anything like that, um, if you have this and you shine it towards them, I bet you anything they'll turn tail and run fairly quick. In fact, there's a story online about a guy that used a, a beam pattern kind of like this and he saved his dogs from a cougar or something like that. So, Alright, so very much just like the last one we showed you, this one is just a wider version of it. So it's a lot broader. Um, honestly, this one is like a floodlight. It does not lose its brightness as it goes further out like a flashlight does. This will light up things. I, I mean, um, notice how I'm clearly not stating shining it at buildings if you're in the city, things like that. Don't shine this at your neighbor's house. Never point lasers at your freaking neighbor's house. That's just rude and um, pretty irresponsible, to be honest. So, Also, again, sorry if you didn't hear earlier. My cats are locked up in their little room, so they're really whining today. So I guess it wouldn't really be fair if I didn't show you guys um, a little bit of the 20% lens, which actually decreases the laser's output by 80%, so you're, you're down to the last 20. So the laser by default is going to run at about, you know, let's say 800 milliwatts. I know it says it's a, a, a 1 watt laser, but it's not going to hit 1 watt. Um, it's less than 1 watt. And um, anyways, when you turn it on um, with the lens cap on, this is the 20% uh, reduction laser, or sorry, 80% reduction laser. Um, you're getting right now about, um, you know, I don't know, I think it's probably like 150 milliwatts of output uh, when you're running it on full power. Um, if you put it on low power like this and the lens cap is on, you just dropped it down to um, probably about 35, uh, 30 milliwatts, which is just a fairly high, high end laser pointer. This is not eye safe. I still wouldn't shine this in anybody's eye at all, but um, I can look at the dot without my um, laser shades pretty safely here. And um, I don't have to worry about um, getting headaches or anything like that from looking at it too long. Up next, we have a few pictures I took with my Nikon camera with long exposures. These are some cool things that you can do if you have a camera that can take long exposure. Most of these are, you know, 8 second to 30 second exposures based on what I wanted to do on the wall or draw. And all I did was take this, the shot and while it was exposed, I would take the laser and draw out these shapes and um, designs, just having a little bit of fun. All right, this is the last lens I'm gonna show you. Um, this is the focusing lens. And you might be asking yourself, what the hell's the focusing lens for? Well, what it does is about an inch or two from the front of the laser, um, if I show you this, about an inch or two from the front of the laser, you can't really see it on the camera, but um, the beam, and I could see it with my eye, the beam gets extremely narrow. And that's used for burning things. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do next. Um, it is perfectly normal for the, the beam to get spread out on the wall like that um, from a distance. We're probably about 12 feet from the wall. Um, that's perfectly normal.